In this video, we're going to go over common mistakes when dividing decimals. Now, as a reminder, making mistakes is proof that you are learning. Mistakes are a good thing. I've identified a few mistakes that many of you made from your work this past week, and we are going to go over these mistakes and learn from them. I am proud that you are making mistakes. That's showing me you're trying. That's showing me you are learning. That is how you learn this material is from your mistakes. Now, for this first problem here, we have 94 hundredths divided by 5. Now, this person here wrote 18 hundredths, which is very, very close. Now, by looking at this problem, this is something where you're going to see that you might have a remainder. And in fact, when you have a remainder, what we're working on now is representing your answer without writing the answer and remainder 2, remainder 5. We're going to continue dividing to help eliminate the remainder. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to read write this problem here. And we have 94 hundredths divided by 5. And we're going to find where this person made their little tiny mistake. Now, first thing when I'm doing my long division, I'm following my process. Now, as I stated before, I am doing long division, but you can feel free to use whatever method you would like. This person completed the first few steps of long division really, really well. Um, I really loved how they did the division. They clearly were able to identify what to do next. They brought down the 4. They recognized that 5 times 8 got you close to or exactly to 44, which in this case we have... <clears throat> 40 and now I'm subtracting and I have four left over. However, what I did really like is that this person simply recognized here's my decimal point in my dividend. I need to bring it to my quotient. And they represented that correctly in this answer. In fact, they wrote 18 hundredths, which is very, very close. The only part that this person forgot to do is recognize that 94 hundredths is also the same as 940 thousandths. And by adding this zero here at the end of my number, I can now continue my division. And in fact, instead of writing remainder 4, I can now recognize that 5 times 8 got me closer exactly to 40. And now, when I subtract, I have no remainder, which is telling me I'm completely finished with my problem, which is why 18 hundredths was very, very close, but the answer should be 188 thousandths instead. Notice we continued on with that problem to eliminate my decimal. Now, this is the same exact problem. I'm not going to redo the division part here, but I do want you to recognize that this person's answer was very, very close. And what I can see by looking here is that it's very easy to simply type a 7 instead of an 8. It's very easy to type a 0 instead of a 6. Or maybe you're looking at your paper and you might have written a 0, but then you typed a 6. Or that 0 might have been written not so neat and you might have recognized it as a six. So it's very, very important that you look at your paper that you're writing these problems on and that you're typing in exactly what you see on your paper on the, in the answer form. So here, make sure you're copying down exactly what you have on your paper into the computer and you're typing that correctly. It's important to go back and check your work that what's on your computer screen and what's on your scrap piece of paper is exactly the same. I see this. This is a very common mistake that I see that you're on the right track, but you're writing the wrong answer in, even though you have the right answer on your paper. The computer will mark it wrong, so make sure you check your work. Now for this next one here, we have 58 hundredths divided by 5. Again, I noticed that this person was really, really close. And in fact, this could have even been a little error when you were copying down your answer from your scrap piece of paper into the keyboard. But I still want to just go over this anyway, because this is a problem where we have that remainder. And we're not going to write remainder 2, remainder 5, whatever that is. We're going to do something else. Now first thing, I look at my divisor. I see no decimal. Therefore, I'm going to simply start doing my long division. Okay, now notice I'm taking it digit by digit, step by step. Now this person did this correctly. I saw that they recognized that we have a 1 here. 5 times 1 is 5. They clearly recognized how to do long division, which is incredible that they were able to recall these skills and apply it here. Now notice I'm doing it step by step. 
However, I'm not going to include remainder three now. I'm going to do something else. But before that, I see that I have a decimal in my dividend. I'm going to simply bring it above to my quotient. And this person recognized to put the decimal point in the correct spot, which is incredible. Sometimes that's the hardest part. But now instead of writing remainder three, I'm going to recognize that 58 hundredths is the same as 580 thousandths. So now I can continue my division. And 5 times 6 gets me close to exactly to 30. 5 times 5 would be 25, which I can get a little bit closer, leaving me with no remainder. So this could have either been two mistakes done, either a computation error, or that they were copying from their paper to the computer screen with the incorrect number. Either way, you were very, very close, and that's absolutely fine. But I hope that you learn from this problem and recognize the small little mistake. However, make sure when you see a remainder that you you simply continue the problem by adding a zero at the end of your number. Now, for this next problem, okay, I can see that this person wrote nine tenths is very, very close. I can see that they did not continue on and determine how I can continue dividing without writing a remainder. So this person was really, really close. In fact, they even had the decimal point in the correct spot. They were really, really close but they can continue now. So 10 times nine, in fact, which is what this person most likely did, got you really, really close to 97 with the remainder of seven. In fact, this person even recognized, here's my decimal in my dividend, let me bring it to my quotient. So nine tenths is very close, but you have that remainder of seven. Now I'm hoping that many of you recognize and have learned that nine and seven tenths is the same as nine and 70 hundredths. Now I can continue my problem, bringing down my zero, 10 times seven is 70. Notice I simply continued and now look at this. I have no remainder, which is telling me my answer is 97 hundredths instead of nine tenths. If you simply wrote nine tenths, you need to still include that remainder, but instead of writing R7, we can simply continue on with our problem. Now for this last one here, we have 94 hundredths divided by five, which I know we already have discussed this problem here, but I wanna go through this one more time. Again, I want you to recognize that looking here, I'm doing my long division pretty quickly. Now again, I have four, bring down my four, five times eight is 40. I can't stress enough that today when you are working with these problems, you need to be writing this on scrap paper. This person recognized, here's my decimal point in my dividend. I need to bring it to my quotient, which is excellent. That's amazing that you recognize that, and I'm proud that you did that. However, when you see a remainder now, you need to do something else. 94 hundredths is the same as 940 thousandths, and now you can continue on. You will be seeing problems like this moving forward. You no longer need to write R2 or R4 next to your answer. I want you to continue dividing from now on, and as you move up to middle school, you need to be able to do this. It's very important that you recognize you're no longer writing your answers with remainder four. You're going to continue dividing by adding those zeros to the end of your decimal points and to continue on with your division. When you move to middle school, you are no longer going to be representing your answers with remainders. You're going to do this to continue on. It's important that you learn these skills now so you can apply them when you are in sixth grade next year.